Okay, well, it's a joy to share with you this evening. I want to just begin with reading from Jude, the epistle of Jude, and just a few verses from Jude, uh, beginning uh, in verse 21. It says, uh, Jude 21, Keep your Lord, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. And uh, just share these verses because I want to think about somebody tonight that came to my attention just recently who seemed to have a knack at pulling people out of the fire. Just a great evangelist that might be an encouragement to all of us. And it's somebody I'd never heard of uh, until uh, just uh, April of this year, I was staying with a couple and uh, getting ready to speak at their conference. And over a meal, I got to ask this brother how he came to know Christ. And like myself, he'd been raised in a Roman Catholic family. And while he was at university, uh, while uh, a student there, uh, somebody he knew on campus who was an, a, a, a drug addict and the kind of person who was so obnoxious you would go out of your way to avoid this individual. And this uh, drug addict got gloriously saved and so radically saved that uh, people could hardly recognize he was the same person. They knew he was the same person, but he his life was totally changed. In fact, the person that he was referring to, I know personally, he's very active in assemblies here in the Midwest, and I do know his story. But anyway, considering my friend, seeing this changed life it really got him thinking and he began to read the bible and he began to take more interest in spiritual matters uh, but he, he, he wasn't getting the answers that he was looking for even though he was searching the scriptures diligently uh, he knew there was something missing in his religion and in his life and then one day a man came on campus who was a notorious campus evangelist in those days this is in the 1970s and so uh, my friend the guy i was staying with he skipped his physics class which wasn't typical he was a very diligent student but he'd heard so much notoriety about this campus preacher that he decided i'm gonna go listen and so he went to listen to this campus evangelist and through the preaching and also the dialogue this man would dialogue with people and apparently the day that he was there he was dialoguing with a jew and as a result of listening to this man dialogue on the on the campus uh he was gloriously saved my friend and that's how he got saved and so i asked him well who was this evangelist he said oh his name is holy hubert holy Hubert. <laughs> and uh, that's going to be the subject of my um, little kind of vignette this evening is Holy Hubert, because I had never heard of Holy Hubert, but uh, I began to do some research uh, online and found that he was very um, influential in what we call the Jesus Revolution. Uh, in fact, some would say that that Jesus movement in the uh, 60s, late 60s, early 70s, that actually uh, it wasn't uh, Lorne Sani uh, or um, uh, Chuck Smith, but actually the, the the instigator under God of all these hippies seeking the Lord Jesus and getting saved was this man, Holy Hubert. And so we want to learn a little bit about him. Uh, and it's hard to find a lot of information. There's a lot of kind of sketchy pieces here and there across the Internet. Uh, there's one biography. I looked at the reviews of the biography and they said, well, it's just anecdotes about his preaching on campus. It really isn't a true biography. And so I haven't pursued that. But uh, from from patching things together uh, on various articles online, I've come up with what I'm going to share tonight. First that I know is that this man was born in Georgia, the state of Georgia, in 1914. And he went to be with Christ on March the 30th, 2003. So that's kind of the, gives you his time frame. So what I've learned about him as I did some research on him was this, that um, uh, he, he was um, a man who had many brushes with death during his preaching career. 
he was a hellfire and brimstone preacher of the old order. <laughs> and so, for instance, uh, his first brush with death, you learn, is in 1938, when somebody shot him when he was in the pulpit preaching. Uh, he, this was in Kentucky uh, while he was having revival meetings. Later in 1946, he was stabbed in a Tennessee church, again, for preaching this message on uh, hellfire. And then in the 50s, uh, his life was again threatened by a gang who actually beheaded his song leader as a warning to him. So this man really a notoriety uh, follows him everywhere. He had a Baptist background, but then would say that at a certain point, he had how he would describe a baptism of power for service. And uh, it really affected his preaching greatly. Uh, again, I'm saying that just telling you his story. I'm not saying that with either censure or, or agreement. I'm just telling you the story as it was. He, that's, that's what he said took place. And that really began his ministry as what we would call a, a revivalist. He began to hold tent meetings across the country, preaching in various churches, and uh, uh, really began to have a thriving ministry as a traveling itinerant evangelist, uh, greatly used of God in that way. But in late 1965, Holy Hubert felt the call of the Lord in a very different direction. He believed that God called him to preach on the increasing turbulent campuses, college campuses across the United States. And the first place he went to was what was then, in those days, the epicenter of the rebellion that was marking uh, American society. And that was the University of Berkeley in California. And so he, he left his successful itinerant gospel preaching ministry and heads off to Berkeley campus and began to preach. During his first year, so that would be that first year, 65, 1965, he was beaten over 150 times on campus for preaching the gospel. Nearly every day as he preached, because he didn't preach at the campus Saturdays or Sundays, it seemed like almost every day somebody administered a beating to this man. But he had some very serious beatings. He was beaten by Hell's Angels. He was beaten by Black Panthers, who were a a racist group at that time, and perhaps most notorious of all, the the Manson family, if you remember the story of uh, Charles Manson, they also beat him up. <laughs> so Yuba had contracts on his life. Uh, he, one time, Hell's Angels uh, had, were paid, eight of them, to assassinate this man and take his life. And what he tells the story that all eight of the assassins got saved and most of them became preachers. So really quite a radical guy. Uh, it, so many of the pictures you'll see if you go online and look for this uh, this man, Holy You, but you'll find that he has a lot of missing teeth. And again, these were uh, as a result of the beatings that he often received on campus. He was beaten so badly that he actually went blind twice uh, the first time, God miraculously restored his sight. Uh, the second time, it impaired his sight, but didn't take it away. But 18 years after that first initial beating, uh, and then uh, he lost his eyesight permanently. But he continued to go to the campus and, and preach. He had memorized most of the text of Scripture. Stop him from going to the campus. He would say that the greatest evidence of a baptism of power was not speaking in tongues or any of those things, but boldness to proclaim the gospel. And of course, that would tie in with what men like Whitfield and Wesley and others would have taught. Uh, R.A. Torrey would have taught those kind of things. He declared that whenever he was confronting hostile crowds, with the gospel, who were verbally and physically abusive to him, uh, crowds filled with people whom he knew wanted to kill him, and yet he said at no point did he ever feel any sense of fear when he was standing before them preaching the gospel. 
when he first went there in 65, no one stood with Hubert uh, when he first arrived at Berkeley. But in time, others began to gather around him and join in his mission of campus preaching. And as we said, he was a preacher in the old sense, a fire and brimstone uh, preacher. Uh, fear of hell was part of what he would use in preaching, damnation, judgment, um, that things uh, would, would very often uh, come from his mouth about, and he would be very specific about different groups. Uh, he would talk about homosexuals. He would talk about communists. He would talk about all these, and he would tell them, you're going to hell uh, because you're rebels and sinners. And he was unashamed of doing this. And of course, in those days, Berkeley was described as a madhouse. By the way, if you go to Berkeley University today, there's a plaque in memory of Holy Hubert on the campus of Berkeley University. Isn't that interesting that this guy uh, uh, so uh, uh, antagonistic to everything that Berkeley would have stood for, and yet they recognize something of this man's boldness. So it was a madhouse. All sorts of people were there proposing their ideas um, for the world in loud voices. Uh, there were Satanists selling the Satanic Bible. There were Hare Krishnas dancing and Maoists passing out their little red book. And L Lindsay, nicknamed Holy Hubert by local newspaper, actually his name was Hubert Lin Doctor. He was actually a doctor. <laughs> he, he, he was fluent in Hebrew and Greek. <laughs> Interesting, uh, this guy, not your typical evangelist. Uh, Dr. Hubert Lindsay became known by the local newspapers as Holy Hubert. That's where he got his nickname. And he stood there and he would preach for eight hours a day on the campus. Full day, day days preaching. Uh, one of the, the socialist professors, a man called Jed Smock, uh, used to hear Holy Hubert preaching on campus. And uh, he, he would taunt you, but he, he would say things like this. He'd say, it would take an idiot to become a Christian. And Hubert would look at him and say, well, you qualify perfectly. And that's how he would. He was very quick-witted. He knew how to answer these people. When they say things at him, he would just throw it back and say, yeah, you're, you're a perfect candidate. Uh, if it takes an idiot to become a Christian, uh, you're, you'd make a good one. And so that's how he would operate. And, and he was very quick-witted, quick on his feet. And uh, one of his most common quotes, he would tell people, he would say this, God bless your dirty little heart. <laughs> That's how he would speak to people. Quite, quite the character. And um, that was, by the way, the name of his biography, God bless your dirty little heart, because that little catchphrase became synonymous uh, with, uh, with Holy Hubert. One day, one of the Black Panthers stood over Hubert beating him and blood was running out of uh, the eyes of Hubert, blood running out of his nose. He had a broken nose, blood running out of his mouth with a broken jaw. And a man stood by and cried out, stop, man, you're killing him. You're killing him. The man beating him said in reply, I'm going to kill that. And you can fill in the blanks. Hubert spoke through the broken jaw before he passed out and said, I love you. I will love you till the end, to the man who was beating him. I will love you to the end. <laughs> As we said, Lindsay's style was aggressive and abrasive. He would shout his way through a list of people who were, he thought, going to hell. Communists, hippies, homosexuals, drug users were high on the list. It didn't make him popular. You know, he, as we said, he was often heckled, beaten, um, but here's some of the testimonies of people. Uh, here's a man whose father was a drug dealer who was converted through listening to Hubert preach on campus. He says, my father said he even saw him shot. According to those who were there, and I can't verify this, but they're just the stories I grew up with. So this is the son telling what his father told him. He was miraculously healed in the ambulance and convinced the driver to take him to the jail so he could tell the man who shot him that unless he accepted Jesus, he was going to hell. This was the kind of man Holy Hubert was. He's, he is considered... Uh, and again, through these various articles, to be the father of the Jesus people movement. And so Chuck Smith, the teacher, uh, took many of these that were saved on the campuses of the West Coast of California and began to teach the Bible to them.
but a lot of them were saved through the preaching of Holy Hubert. Also, other open-air evangelists were emboldened to take the mantle of Holy Hubert. Um, on one occasion, he was taken to task uh, by a, a Christian who questioned the value of open-air preaching efforts. And interestingly enough, uh, one person stood up uh, when this was being leveled at Hubert, and he told the story of how he became a Christian through listening to Holy Hubert's preaching on campus. This is another testimony. He says, I remember Holy Hubert Lindsay open air preaching on the 2400 block of Telegraph Avenue, Berkeley, California, about 1966. I was a lad of 15, joining with some of the crowd, throwing pennies near the feet of Hube in mock tribute. Now I would like to pay tribute to Hubert Lindsay for the glory of the all-knowing God who awakened this kid in a big way. I am so glad our Lord used this red-faced man, born for controversy, to reach myself and so many others during that e era. It is well recognized that there was a large-scale awakening among youth for the next decade. There were plenty of others involved, but few who matched the fearless preaching of Holy Eub. Thank God, he says, for his work. This is once a mocker who is now a believer, and he's attributing uh, the, the, the ministry of Holy Eub, but having a tremendous impact on his life. Even in his old age, blind and in a wheelchair, Holy Hubert would go out on the campuses and call sinners to repent. Even President Nixon took notice of Holy Hubert and said that Hubert alone saved America millions of dollars. Because during those days, there would be huge political rallies on the campuses and Holy Hubert would go and preach and completely defuse the situation so that riot squads would not have to go in. Dr. Billy Graham once asked Brother Lindsay, Dr. Lindsay, what is the greatest demonstration that you have ever broken up? Dr. Lindsay replied, 35,000 people. A mob of 35,000 people diffused by this man's preaching. Billy Graham said, one man? Hubert replied, Jesus was with me, Dr. Graham. It wasn't just one man. <laughs> It was, was Dr. Uh, Lindsay Hubert and the Lord Jesus with him. Billy Graham said, may I quote you on that? Hubert said, you may. Some feel that Dr. Lindsay was the greatest of Bible expositors. Even Billy Graham used to go and listen to him preach on the campus. And all I can say is, I stayed with a guy who was gloriously saved when Dr. Hubert Lindsay, or Holy Hubert, came to a campuses in Oklahoma State University and preached the gospel, and that day he was gloriously saved. So again, just encouraging, isn't it, that the power of the gospel, and yet the courage, the boldness, that perhaps many of us need to pray, Lord, <laughs> I don't have that kind of courage, but it's very enlightening to see how God used that man so greatly. So anyway, I hope that's an encouragement to us to continue to pray for revival and also to recognize that these unity camps can be key areas uh, for the forwarding of the work of Christ, that, that Jesus revolution. Again, as we look at our day, we see campuses once again in ferment. Pray for work on university campuses. May God encourage us with these thoughts. Amen.